So maybe uh, this becomes clear with an example. So if we go back to the Patman example, at all times, you want to eat ghosts, eat dots, eat big dots, and avoid ghosts. They're sort of all happening at the same time. It's just at any given point in time, one of them happens to be ascendant. Okay, yeah, that example makes more sense to me than the than the navigation example. Sure, but I think conceptually they're the same. It's just it's easier it's easier to think about it. In fact, we actually have a name for these kind of things. Uh, we call them predator prey scenarios. Who's we? Uh, you and me. So here, there's no, 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 no. I don't call them that. Yes, you do. This is a pred. Well, okay. The literature. We there's a the literature is repeat replete with uh, examples of things called predator prey where. You know, you basically want to go around eating as much as you can, but there's some predator who's trying to eat you. So you're always trying to eat because you have to eat or otherwise you die of starvation. But you have to avoid the predator or otherwise you die while the other one's not dying of starvation. And Pac-Man is just an example of predator prey, right? Pac-Man needs to eat all of these things. Meanwhile, there are predators out there trying to eat it. And so there are kind of competing goals happening at the same time. I need to eat. I need to avoid being eaten. Right? And all of these are really examples of that. They even use the word eat and avoid in them. <laughs> so I need to eat my food. And at the same time, I need to avoid being eaten. And occasionally, because I live in a magical world where suddenly uh, rabbits become as big as wolves, I can occasionally eat the wolf. <laughs> I see. Right? right. But but once you think about it that way, um, you can stop thinking about – I mean – you. So I'm, I'm not. I want to make. I'm not trying to make a gigantic point here. Other than we can think about actions as actions we're executing, or we can think about these options as things that are accomplishing goals. And this is where goal abstraction comes from in my title here. That really all of these options are about accomplishing different goals. You're trying to always accomplish those goals. Some goals are more important than others at any given point in time. And options, in fact, uh, really make this sort of nice to think about because of beta. Because beta captures sort of the probability that we might terminate in a state. From this sort of goal abstraction point of view, you could think about this as either the probability that I've succeeded in executing that option, that is, I've accomplished my goal, or that another goal has become important and I need to interrupt whatever goal I was paying attention to at the time. That makes sense. Right. So I like this notion of uh, thinking about options or thinking about actions is always accomplishing goals and always sort of happening in parallel. Options are easier to think about than primitive actions that way because, in fact, when we define the options, we, I think we sort of naturally think of them as accomplishing goals. That's sort of the, the whole point. And primitive actions are sort of so low level, they don't really have, other than primitive goals like moving left or moving right, they don't really have big high level things that they're trying to accomplish. But options almost always do. That's why they're useful and that's why People tend to come up with the ones they tend to come up with, or, you know, so it seems to me. And so when we think about managing goals, then we actually end up with a different way of thinking about this problem. And we move from a world where we're worrying about sequencing and hierarchical abstractions to a world where we think about managing and arbitrating between goals. Yeah, so let me, let me write down different ways we might do that because it turns out there's a whole subfield that worries about thinking about the problem this way.